Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to my channel. My name is Paul, the Canadian Snowman, here once again with some more awesome history. The Seven Wonders of the World. 3D, apparently. Uh, someone actually suggested this. I wasn't sure. I'm not sure actually what channel I suggested, but there's one for kings and generals, and that is awesome. Um, to be honest, I didn't. Like, before, like, obviously there's a picture of the stuff now. I wouldn't be able to tell you what the seven wonders of the world, world are. I've been like, okay, uh, the pyramids, uh, the Great Wall of China. And then after that, I would have been speculating, like, you know, is the Eiffel Tower, you know, part? I, I would have known. I, I, knew, I just knew the pyramids and the Great Wall for a fact. Everything else, I really wasn't sure about. So, uh, at least I'll actually know... Uh, what they are and like and why they are obviously you know pretty significant feats you know and i guess building and whatnot so uh obviously that's the reason why but uh i'm sure there's a whole lot more we're gonna get some explanations on this stuff you know so anyways guys please hit that like and subscribe button below I really appreciate it. it helps the channel out a lot and yeah let's jump into this this is gonna be cool always want to do watch a video of the seven wonders of the world and now i get to Three, two, one, bam. Countless examples of architectural and cultural greatness in humanity's ancient past are permanently lost to the modern world, reduced to dust throughout long centuries, or destroyed in upheavals, both natural and anthropogenic in nature, or sometimes both. The seven wonders of the ancient world are perhaps the greatest examples of such lost beauty. Located in the eastern Mediterranean, these legendary wonders have long captivated and inspired the imagination. Welcome to our video giving an overview of the Seven Wonders. Just these little graphics are doing is pretty amazing how they're quickly showing how something was built, so this is going to I can already tell it's going to be amazing. And what better sponsor can there be for a video on the ancient wonders of the world than Paradox and Imperator Rome? Paradox is famous for supporting wonders with unique regional or statewide bonuses. It marvels is the most mysterious of them. The first of our marvels is the most mysterious of them all. The Hanging Gardens of Babylon. Huh? Our classical sources on the Great Gardens such as Diodorus Siculus, Strabo, and Josephus, themselves drew from older writings which are now lost. In one of those vanished sources, a Babylonian priest of Marduk, known as Berossus, wrote how King Nebuchadnezzar II once wed a princess Amethyst of the Median Empire. This was probably a diplomatic arrangement, and Amethyst seems to have grown understandably homesick a fact which Nebuchadnezzar attempted to remedy in spectacular fashion by constructing elevated gardens and filling them with trees from his wife's place of origin. Although widespread in many of the ancient sources, this tale and the gardens of Babylon are almost certainly a legend without any historical basis, passed down and distorted over time. Nevertheless, it does... Okay, so this is not like a fact, this is... But is it, that's cool. So basically, it's like a smaller pyramid and just levels, you know, of trees and fruit and stuff. Like, yeah, that's pretty cool. Contain the truth that ornate royal gardens were used by ancient kings to display their wealth, ability to create lush beauty within arid environments, and for luxury. A prime feature of such gardens, for example... I'm sorry, I'm pausing. But yeah, I, I definitely see it as people doing this. I mean... I'm sure that gets done to this gets done today, but yeah, like having like tropical paradise, like in the middle of it, like a giant desert. We'll stop. I'm sorry, I'm gonna finish this sentence here. Environments and for luxury, a prime feature of such gardens, for example, were trees possessing leaves which sheltered people of note from the scorching sun. There is no evidence of elaborate garden constructions of this kind at Babylon. However, it is speculated by historians such as Stephanie Daly that the Hanging Gardens did exist, but not in Babylon. Instead, she began the now-dominant hypothesis that they were constructed in the Neo-Assyrian capital of Nineveh by King Sennacherib, 
who reigned over vast swaths of the Near East from 705 to 681 BC. Hmm. If these hanging gardens of Nineveh were indeed a reality, then their destruction would have likely come in 612 BC, the year in which Assyria's long subjugated empire rose up against it, descended on the imperial capital and put it to utter ruin. After two Persian invasions in the first decades of the 5th century were defeated, the golden age of classical Greece, and particularly Athens, began in earnest. New and more sophisticated forms of culture were pioneered in this civilizational blossoming, including the iconic Greek play, philosophical concepts which remain with us today, and crucially, grander styles of architecture and sculpture. To enhance the hallowed shrine of Zeus at Olympia, in the Peloponnese, the governing council there chose to build a large temple, inside, inside which an already existing image of the god existed, and could be protected from the elements. Hmm. However, the classical age's awe-inspiring tastes demanded something beyond a small cult object, so an exiled Athenian sculptor was hired to create an ideal image of the king of the gods, Phaedias. According to the retelling of later Roman authors, the sculptor's inspiration for this great project was Homer, and specifically verses 528 to 530 in the Iliad. In these particular passages, he talks of an austere Zeus, the movement of whose head caused the whole of Mount Olympus to shake. Using techniques developed first during his work in Athens, Phaedias completed a spectacular 42-foot tall representation of Zeus sitting on a godly throne. In his 42 feet, like, sculpted that by himself? He got had some helpers with him, right? But then again, the helpers would have to have the same kind of skill he had to be able, I guess, make the shape and then polish it. Because how long would that take one? That'd take like a lifetime for someone to make that sculpture by themselves. I mean, I guess, I don't know, man, that is crazy. I, obviously, it can get done. I'm not saying it can get done or anything. I mean, things probably still, you know, around to this day. Maybe not. I don't know. But that's amazing. And if tall representation of Zeus sitting on a godly throne. In his right hand, the figure holds an icon of the goddess Nike, and in the left is grasped a scepter crowned by an eagle. So huge did the work sit in its temple, that if the god were to stand, it would definitely destroy its housing. For almost 1,000 years following its construction, the statue amazed and awed visitors who held Zeus divine. However, when the Roman Empire instituted Christianity as its state religion in 391, Theodosius I implemented laws which led to the sanctuary's decline. The statue itself was eventually carted off to adorn a palace in Constantinople, where it was destroyed by fire in 462 AD. <sighs> Three more of the ancient wonders could be... That's a shame, you know, just like works of art like that, but as I go... War and conquest, I mean, there's got to be so many things in the history, like amazing things that we just don't know about being being destroyed because of war. And that would be so cool to kind of see that thing in person. We visited across the Bosphorus on Asia Minor's western coast, one of which historian Edward Gibbon described in poetic fashion. The arts of Greece and the wealth of Asia had conspired to erect that sacred and magnificent structure. Successive empires, the Persian, Macedonian, and Roman, revered its sanctity and enriched its splendor. This particular praise is reserved for none other than the Temple of Artemis at Ephesus. First constructed in the 6th century BC reign of, and patronized by the prodigious wealth of, Lydian king Croesus, the temple was an intricately decorated, glittering rectangular structure surrounded by 127 beautiful 60-foot-high fluted columns in the Ionic style. To further emphasize its importance, the main platform was elevated slightly above ground level, reached by any potential suppliant by perfectly crafted marble steps. In addition to the splendor of its oriental construction, mixed with the Hellenic spirit in which it was so clearly infused, 
the so-called Artemisium is rightly famed for the myriad historical figures it is connected to. According to legend, King Croesus was about to be sacrificed by the soldiers of Cyrus the Great, but then the skies suddenly opened up and rain began to fall, the Persians relented and Croesus was saved. The temple's patron goddess failed utterly to intervene in a similar manner when Herostratus, who notoriously desired fame immortal by any means necessary, burned the sanctuary down in 356, supposedly on the very evening Alexander the Great was born. Plutarch justifies her absence by explaining how the goddess was dealing with just this special birth. It was tenaciously rebuilt soon after, but in the midst of Rome's imperial crisis, Ephesus's Artemisium was destroyed by piratical Gothic raiders in 262. Although it was semi-rebuilt in the respite of the early 4th century, early church father St. John Chrysostom completely leveled the pagan structure in 402. Damn. Almost exactly 100 miles south of the ground. So, like, what? It just seemed like it was like not really a building, as you know, it has the roof, has the ground, and has a whole bunch of pillars. Like, what exactly was it used for, apparently? I mean,. Uh, I didn't, like, see, like, any kind of rooms inside of it. It just seemed like a bunch of pillars. So what, I, I guess I'm, I'm just a little confused. Uh, used, like, I guess it's for sacrifices and stuff like that. Because it just seemed like a whole bunch of pillars. Kind of like you walk in there and it just seemed really cool. And was kind of like, not a maze or anything. But just a bunch of pillars. Like, there's no area to do, like, a certain thing, it seemed like. I don't know. I think I'm just dumb when I just missed uh, some information on that. I don't know. Grand Temple of Artemis sat the great Carian city of Halicarnassus. At that time, this Greek realm was a powerful satrapy kingdom within the Achaemenid Empire, so its ruler Morsulus was a Persian satrap as well as a monarch of his own realm. He moved his capital from the old Carian royal seat at Milassa to the ancient harbour city of Halicarnassus, refounding it after a period of neglect. There, Morsulus also wed his sister, Artemisia, who along with her husband, began work on a lavish tomb for the dynasty. When the Carian ruler did eventually perish in 353 BC, with the work unfinished, Artemisia ensured it was completed before her death two years later. Constructed using a skillful synergy of Hellenic, Persian and Egyptian architecture, this mausoleum, as it came to be known in reference to its patron, comprised a huge 440-foot circumference podium topped with ionic columns and a pyramidal roof. Decorating the intricate work were a number of statues and reliefs, the most notable of which was one Whoa. in the image of Morsulus riding a Herculean chariot placed atop the mausoleum's roof. As one of the longer-lasting ancient wonders, Morsulus's tomb remained standing proudly throughout the Macedonian and Roman empires and further into the Crusader Age. Consigned to irrelevance long before, the colonnade and upper section of Morsulus's resting place was collapsed by an earthquake at some point in the early 2nd millennium. However, like so many other artifacts of the ancient past, the mausoleum was condemned to oblivion by the Crusaders. Seeking to re-fortify their nearby fortress at Bodrum in 1494, the Knights of St. John used a significant amount of the remaining mausoleum stone to bolster the fortifications, including a number of slabs depicting the Amazonomachy, the mythical battle between Greeks and the warrior woman Amazons. That was, that was really cool. I wonder how much it would cost to get, like, an identical one built today like how much money would that cost but yeah that that was that's definitely impressive like that was beautiful with all the decorations and stuff and especially back in the day man it had to take a lot of skill and a lot of workers man it had to cost a lot too but i can definitely i'm glad it got to survive like you know for a long time but i can definitely understand if you're at war and you need supplies or you, you know you to like build you know, something, you know, to protect whatever you're trying to protect. Like, and this is like kind of, even though people have guessed it, like, oh, man, we don't want to take this down, but it's either, you know, don't take it down and we get possibly be beaten in this war or battle. 
or take it down where we know we can kind of have our defenses or whatnot. I don't know. But anyways, I, I can never understand it. And then at least, you know, a cloud when it you know, went down the first time, it was because of an earthquake, you know. I just feel bad, like, when it's like a Raiders, they come in and just destroy just for the sake of destroying it. I was like, no, why do you do that? But anyways. The inner chamber was also looted in the aftermath, but a number of treasures were eventually carted off to the British Museum during later excavations, where they remain to this day. To conclude our journey around the Anatolian seaboard, we go to the island of Rhodes. At the very tip overlooking one of the great Rhodian harbours for hundreds of years was a massive statue of the Greek sun god Helios, patron deity of the island and city. Its name, as almost everyone knows, was the Colossus of Rhodes. The great statue's history begins with Alexander the Great's death and the conflicts between the Macedonian generals and nobles, known as the Diadochi Wars. This continued until a deadly... If you're new to my channel, Diadochi Wars, I've done a whole series on those wars. Definitely check out the play playlist by Dachi. Is that how you pronounce it? Wars? Because I've done a whole playlist on that. So definitely check that out. That was really cool to watch and very interesting stuff. So yeah, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, definitely check that uh, those wars out. Known as the Diadochi Wars. Diadochi. This continued until a deadly, unstable balance of power began to emerge. Among those powers, the Antigonids, Antigonus I, the One-Eyed, and his son Demetrius, were unquestionably the most powerful, opposed by a coalition informally led by Ptolemy in Egypt. In 307, at the very zenith of Antigonus's power, Rhodes refused to join his war against Ptolemy due to economic relations with the latter leading eventually to the Siege of Rhodes by Demetrius in 305 BC. Nice. Despite Demetrius' skill, Rhodes survived the siege and then sold Demetrius' siege engines for funds to create a grand monument to their victory, the Colossus. After a significant time of preparation, Rhodes' appointed sculptor, Carries of Lindos, and his bronze casters constructed the giant 30-meter-tall statue between 294 and 282 BC when it was finally completed. Unlike the Colossus's literary clone in Game of Thrones, the Rhodian real thing did not bestride the harbor entrance. Unfortunately, the metal and stone giant did not stand for long. In 226, it and the... I was going to say, because... Yeah, I've watched... I watched the entire Game of Thrones series. I like, got that statue, and uh, I've seen that statue in other videos. And I was like, obviously, you know, I was like, is that, that, is that real? You know, does that thing actually exist? So apparently, at least I can put that to rest. That statue did not exist. I wasn't sure if that was like a myth or it did exist, but, you know, just, you know, just got destroyed, just like, you know, a lot of these structures have. But this one did exist, except for not in that big uh you know they not the not the view that we kind of think about you know that the game of thrones structure like they said but anyways that's still really cool man i mean like people back then seeing like structures or statues like that it must have been an awe the city in which it stood was racked by a massive earthquake which broke helios at the knee and sent him tumbling down destroying many houses wow. ptolemy the third ruler of Egypt at the time, offered to bankroll a restoration, but the Rhodians declined due to the ban of an oracle. Huh. So, in its collapsed state, the Colossus lay where it fell for 900 years, until what? the Arabs plundered it in 654 AD. Across the Mediterranean coast, in the primeval kingdom of Egypt, our penultimate wonder goes a long way to prove the assertion that Alexander the Great had some involvement in almost every lofty occurrence after his time. In 332 BC, during the Macedonian invasions, Alexander annexed Egypt, including the offshore island of Pharos, from the Persian Empire. Marching north from the old pharaonic capital of Memphis, Alexander came across a small fishing village known as Rakotis, located on a brilliant site. As the new pharaoh of Egypt, he ordered that a mighty city be constructed there 
from which he could look across the sea at his homeland. It was the first and most famous of many cities to bear the king's name, Alexandria. To accomplish the task in appropriately grandiose fashion, the king appointed his talented court architect, Dinocrates of Rhodes, who eagerly got to the task. Plans for the city's layout were drawn up in the latest Hellenistic grid style developed by Hippodamus of Miletus. With those blueprints to work on, the construction of this so-called Queen of Cities began immediately. As Alexandria slowly but surely came into being under Ptolemy's supervision during the Diadochi Wars, a wealthy Ptolemaic courtier and diplomat known as Sostratus provided, at least in part, the 800 silver talents necessary to fund his city's most famous piece of artistic genius mixed with practical usage, the Lighthouse, or Pharos of Alexandria, named so... At least even after, like, his death, like, this the construction kept going on. Like, they still wanted this to go on and have it be grand and everything. So that's, that's awesome. Because of the island upon which it was constructed. Just over 100 meters tall in total, the Pharos was almost certainly a three-tiered structure, decreasing in scale from bottom to top. The first was a rectangular segment of 60 meters, above which was a cylindrical tower of a further 30 meters. The weight of the upper structure was held by a similar cylinder structure within the lower tier. The lighthouse was capped with a summit, crowned by both a great beacon and statue of Zeus Soter, Zeus the Saviour. The resilient Pharos and its brilliant seaward light survived relatively intact until the later part of the first millennium AD, when it was badly damaged by a series of earthquakes. Arab traveller Ibn Battuta visited Alexandria in 1349, and according to him, Pharos was in such a bad state that it was not possible to enter it or climb up to the doorway. The final wonder on our list. Wow, I mean, that's a pretty impressive. I was like, I don't think people like uh, an army would end up like destroying it because I think it's kind of out of the way where, you know, it's not like, you know, they've had someone have to go through that to get to something. So I wouldn't think an army would destroy it, but you know, just mother nature, just, you know, earthquakes or tsunamis or whatever, you know, things just get destroyed over time. Like I'm sure like buildings staying to this day, man, you leave them you know, a thousand years from now, I'm sure most of the buildings, these cities and buildings aren't going to be there anymore. Right. So, but yeah, all these kind of, kind of these wonders of the world right here would be so kind of, it would be so cool to kind of see in person, you know, if they were, you know, still, you know, up to this day. Khufu's Great Pyramid is the oldest and only one to survive. The Great yeah. Pyramid was the culmination of centuries worth of research and advancements in architecture during the Old Kingdom. Its predecessors were the rectangular mud brick mastaba and the following step pyramid, the most famous of which housed the sacred remains of 3rd dynasty pharaoh Djoser at Saqqara. Constructed by the pharaoh's vizier Imhotep, this structure was the very first to be constructed entirely out of stone. Sophisticated construction techniques and innovations continued to advance apace as the Third Dynasty came to an end, with the notable advent of the Pyramid Complex, consisting of the magnificent tomb itself, adjacent mortuary temples, causeways, sphinxes, and other related buildings and tributes to the dead god-king. The second monarch to rule over the fourth dynasty, Khufu, or Cheops as his name is Hellenized, commissioned his vizier Heman to construct a royal tomb for him as well, selecting the site of Giza near the edge of the Libyan desert. His smooth-sided construct was the first and grandest pyramid to occupy the area, but far from the last. Dedicated Egyptian officials and workers undertaking corvée labour had the site levelled to provide an open section of ground for the work. Then, probably using nothing but astronomical observation, the orientation for each side was obtained. Contrary to modern expectations, this archaic method was in fact incredibly accurate, and the alignment error on each side is only a fraction of a degree. Hemon oversaw the building process, a process which we're still not certain of 4,500 years later. Historians consider two main possibilities. 
either that the Egyptians used ramps to encircle the grand structure as it gradually rose, or that they had a long ramp stretching out into the desert, extended as necessary as the pyramid ascended. However it was done, the movement of stone blocks at minimum five tons in weight must have been a titanic effort. When that stone was in place, the entire pyramid was layered with uniform blocks of shimmering white limestone, giving Khufu's tomb an appropriately divine appearance. The labor of Hemon and all of his myriad technicians, engineers and workers is so enduring that 4,500 years later, we can still visit Giza and see the complex in its mostly intact state. So unfathomably ancient is the structure that an Arab proverb states that man fears time, yet time fears the pyramids. We always have more stories to tell, wow, so make sure you so are subscribed cool. to our channel and have pressed the bell button. That's such a cool saying. Wow, 4,000, like, or 4,000 years ago, and it still stands. That's amazing, because that's the oldest one of all of all of these uh, uh, wonders, and, and it's the only one still standing. Uh, that's amazing. I mean, the thing is huge, and, I mean, I would probably it'd take a lot of effort just to take one of those down back then, you know? So people, people are probably like, I, never mind that, leave it up, you know? And it's a tomb, so you know people in that area too are probably like you know don't mess with that you know probably bad luck kind of thing, but uh, well I honestly I'm expecting like the I didn't I guess I should read these uh, headlines Seven Wonders of the Ancient World I just thought it was like the regular Seven Wonders of the World that's why I put that picture up there uh, yeah before I did this video but uh, it did this was definitely better this was definitely I'm glad. That, I was definitely surprised when I started watching it. Okay, and then we're not going to see the regular uh, stuff here. So definitely awesome ancient wonders of the world. Uh, favorite one. Hmm. Dang, I don't know which is my favorite. Probably uh, the one that lasted the longest. That, I mean, I forget what it's called. The square building had all those the kind of like statues all around it that lasted very long. And then it ended up collapsing and then rebuilt. And then the pieces being, I think, were taken to kind of make a fort or something like that. I forget which one that was called. But I think that was my favorite of all of them. Uh, but anyways, let me know your which one you liked most in the comments. Uh, I would like to know that. And uh, yeah, please hit that like and subscribe button below. And I'm definitely gonna have to get into the regular Seven Wonders of the World eventually. You know, that'd be that'd be kind of pretty cool to see. So, anyways, uh, peace. Catch you guys in future videos. Thank you for watching. Always a pleasure. History is awesome and lots of fun. But anyways, out here, peace. Bye.